Excellent. Okay, we're just looking at your Florida, your, uh, Florida State Militia cards. This is very well done. This is excellent. This is the kind of work that needs to be done. Now, this is actually organized militia. Got you, you little monster. <laughs> you some uh, bug spray? No, I'm okay. It just now, I think it's the light. Okay. I'm naturally I'm naturally deadly to bugs, I guess. They don't need to see to bother me down here this year. Um, most of you are probably already participating with the militia, but if you're not, I recommend that if you're in outside an area where you're not close enough to be part of one of the regiments that are already organized, what we tell everybody to do is get your act together and organize yet another one. We need as many organized regiments completed as quickly as possible. That can't be emphasized enough. And the reason is their safety in numbers. It's also a shell game. So if you have different elements, you can shift forces and capabilities. You can perform counterintelligence activities, creating shadow elements in some area, functional elements in another. It's very important that you adopt many practices that are traditional that do work, that are impossible to counter in many cases, especially when we compartmentalize the mechanism the way it is. I'll give him a minute because it looks like you changing tapes. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. I'll wait. Not a problem. Mark, why don't you break it? I'll tell you what we can do. Would you like to break and eat? Because I know you're probably hungry. Let's do that. Yeah, if everyone's here, we're eating anyway. Three portions. Yeah, I did that. I thought I heard him back there. Get ready to take them home. Oh, we'll probably take two each. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you want to show that? He must have caught one today. Yeah. This is one during the day that was caught an ass and shot about 100 feet over the house. Approximately 100 feet. Wednesday, 545. We went and passed that picture Three around. Three days ago. What city? Hey, yeah. Park. Downtown. <laughs> Downtown where? Blackhawk. Downtown where? Avon Park. Oh. Avon Park, Florida. Okay. You yeah. shoot it down. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been a gun. That was the third one this week. He lost his roof if he shot it down. Come down on his house. Or the neighbors. Which is okay. Yeah. If you want no, to his neighbors are patriot. Oh, okay, we can't do that. <laughs> okay. I converted most of my neighborhood. <laughs> Either run them off or convert them. <laughs> Mark. Yes. If you were briefly touching on the uh, militia card before, do you want to expound upon that or Oh, no, I just uh, comp was company. Uh, the format is good. Uh, if you're going to be doing that, then that's, of course, the stats above the militia at large, but below the organized militia, the way that's set. That's, that's excellent. Because you're not with a guard, you're with, the, you're with the regular militia, states militia, of course. Not under the authority of the federal government, which is important. It's, uh, just to touch on that, everybody should understand, we, we discussed this beforehand, the fact that the state has a national defense force separate from the National Guard. Just to make sure that everybody understands how the tiers of our military are supposed to work, and the first level, the active military forces of the Union, are, uh, of course, the regular Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps, etc. The next tier are Army... Over there. Okay. Okay. Is that good? His cameraman's going. Cameraman's going to want to change the position of the camera, though. Anyway, uh, the next tier below that is the Army Reserve, and many people are not familiar with the Army Reserve with respect to the fact that it is a federal force, not the National Guard. When you heard about the search and seizures that took place in Baltimore, the MJTF forces that were there were not National Guard forces, they were Army Reserve, which means those were federal forces working as law enforcement inside the United States. That is against the law and direct violation of posse comitatus. That specifically restricts the U.S. military from being used against the American population in any way, shape, or form unless a national emergency is declared and signed by the president. That won't be a problem. That won't be a problem, that's right. Well, actually, nobody's had the guts to do that for quite some time for obvious reasons. Hillary does. Uh, yeah. She's the one who has the male out of town. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Anyway, um, now she's a lesbian, Mark. Now, well, at least you wish. She's a lesbian. That's a good name for it. The uh, <laughs> the reserve, the reserve is the next tier. 
Beyond that is the National Guard, which is an organized militia which traditionally used to be under the power of the state. The mistake is this. When the federal government provided arms for the, for the National Guard, a prostitution took place. And because they control the arms, they control the militia. So it is no longer a state's militia. The governor has some authority, but it is centralized with the federal government. Below that are the, the state's militias, or home guard, and then lower still, but no lesser, all of these are equal as far as military potential, is the militia at large. Now the organized militias and state militias, there are 17 states that specifically have state guard or state home guard or state militia forces. Of those, most of them are heavily restricted by the state already also, so we have a situation where even they've been compromised. The militia at large and, and unregulated militia forces that are truly assigned to the people are all that is left to us that is not owned by the federal government, by the central forces. The problem with this is, of course, that they have some of the heavy weapons, or most of the heavy weapons that we can, that we can describe. That's not that complicated. We'll have those when we need them. But um, the amount of money spent, the resources available, unfortunately, that were spent over the last many decades are now going out, those resources are going out to external forces. They will not be in our hands. We've gotten reports from all over the United States. In fact, we were in Mississippi. We just got several other hand-carried reports stating that the guards' weapons have been uh, disassembled, which is typical, of course, for security, that the ammunition has been transferred over to law enforcement for their training, and that the units themselves are being dispersed or being dissolved. And that's happening all over the United States. If we were going into a time of peace, one thing you should all remember is your National Guard gets more bang for the buck with regard to cost. You can buy just about four Guard units for the price of one regular Army unit. And traditionally, when we've come out of a war or even a major conflict of any kind, we reduce the number of active components and increase the number of Guard. This is not happening right now. In fact, they're cutting back on Guard elements dramatically in many areas. They're cutting back somewhat on active forces, and they are redistributing the wealth to ensure that the Guard does not have the same potential in many cases that the federal forces have that are now under UN authority. Those few forces that are left intact are going to be transferred over, and as has been mentioned, they're talking about mobilizing these Guard units to be used overseas. In the past, they have not wanted to do that because they were under our authority, but now that they're raising the UN flag over our troops, what they're doing is usurping state authority and... Dreams been cruising. 